Johnny Tarazai is making his first goal for the club. Yes, he can. And it's Patrick Herman who has scored. What a goal from Max Yoro. Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for episode number 14 of season 2 of our FIFA 16 Leicester City career mode and as the intro alluded to, our summer signings have done very very well this season and there's no denying guys like Arnold, Herman, Ben Yedder have completely changed the team but of course we are now in January and that means the January transfer window it is now time to see whether there's any signings we make in the winter transfer window can have the same influence as the guys did when we signed them in the summer transfer window and you guys voted that we should get a new right back to replace the unhappy and unsettled Richie Delat. and uh, in the background you're seeing a few of the examples Kevin Dix of Vitesse, Thomas Kajora and also then some people that you suggested in the comments section. Now before we get into things properly uh, someone asked whether they could see a squad report this episode there isn't one because I'd already recorded it by the time I got that comment but next episode I will show a squad report as well as some training as well but there wasn't time with the, the transfer activity that is going to be going on again if we could smash the like button on this episode that'd be massively appreciated and for those that are playing on PC you might find a link in the description fairly helpful it is WWT FIFA mods they specialize in modding uh, the PC version of FIFA 16 and if you've got any queries or you want any tips on that then feel free to hit the link in the description below that will really help those guys out. In the background though you have seen the examples of the right backs we're looking for. We've made inquiries for all of them. First of all Kevin Dix of Vitesse. Uh, Vitesse Arnhem want two and a half million pounds for him. Uh, Wolves came back and talked about Dominic Iorfa. Uh, we inquired about him and uh, they set us a price tag of 3.4 million pounds. Lech Pojlan got back to us about Thomas Kajura and they said they wanted 2.8 million pounds. So you can see that none of the none of the price tags are really that expensive. Red Bull Leipzig uh, when I inquired about Lucas Klosterman, that was another suggestion from the comments section. They said they only wanted £2.2 .2 million. Uh, Sao Paulo said they only wanted £3 million for the young Brazilian right back who is known as Arrow. And then the final inquiry was to Saidi Janko. £3.4 million uh, suggested by Celtic. But given his potential and his current overall, I'm not entirely sure that's something I want to look at. So... I think Saidi Yanko is probably the only person I can rule out for now, but all the other guys you just saw there are still firmly in the running to be bought. In the meantime, last time you guys voted that I shouldn't be making uh, counter offers for players that are in the starting 11, so as a result of that, you can see we are uh, rejecting all future offers for Brill Donald Mbolo after getting a £17.5 million offer from Schalke. Pretty hefty after we signed him for just under 10, but you guys said you didn't want to sell players like that or even counter offer for players like that, so I completely understand, and uh, the only players we counter offer for will be people who are in the substitutes or players who are slightly more expendable than the likes of Mbolo and um and, you know, the starting 11 players. In the meantime, we're now making some bids for the right backs. A £2.3 million offer for Sao Paulo's Auro, who I think is about 72 or 73 by this point in the career mode. Lucas Klosterman of Red Bull Leipzig were making a £1.5 million bid for him. Just testing the waters, as I always do. Put in a slightly lower offer than uh, the value they got they gave to us when we inquired. And just see how things go. Just haggle and negotiate a little bit instead of just going straight in and uh, matching what they want. Uh, Thomas Kajura of, of Alec Pojna, the 22-year-old, we're offering £2.2 .2 million. He's very much the unknown option. Someone you've probably never heard of, whereas the likes of Iorfa and uh, an Auro, maybe you have. And next up, though, Kevin Dix making a £2 million offer for the Vitesse Arnhem Dutch Youngster, 10k is his salary. Again, the, the price tags are fairly low and the salaries are pretty low as well. And then finally, Dominic Iorfa. Wolves wanted 3.4. We're going to offer slightly lower than that. And we're going to give them £2.75 million pounds, uh, to the West Midlands team. We'll have to see how that one goes. He's probably the most high-profile player of the lot and I think has the highest of the potentials. Nevertheless, it's now time to move into the first game of today's episode at St. James's Park as we face off in an away tie against Newcastle in the Barclays Premier League. Now, historically, we've got a pretty good record against Newcastle in this series. We've beaten them 3-0 twice, and last time we faced them uh, in, you know, earlier on in this season, we beat them 3-1. There you can see the squad that will be facing up against the North East side, and Drinkwater putting a ball forward for Riyad Mahrez very early on, 
and he sliced it well wide. Probably my fault. I should have pressed finesse instead of trying to blast it top corner. But a bad miss there for Riyad Mahrez. We're going forward again though. Florian Torvan missing his slide tackle and Jeffrey Schlupp. And it's allowed him to get down the left-hand side. Put a ball in for Mbolo. He heads it across the box for Sisto who tries the overhead kick. But what a save that is from the Newcastle goalkeeper. And after those first few chances, this move really summing things up. Daryl Yamat stealing the ball off us. We could not get out of our own half after the 15-minute mark. And somehow Papi Cisse blasts the ball wide after a really nice Newcastle move. Anita then finding Sim de Jong, but he drags his shot just wide of Kasper, Schme uh, Kasper Schmeichel's post. And now Newcastle are going forward in the second half with a lovely counter-attack. Musa Sissoko finding Sammy Amiobi in all sorts of space. Vimmer's never going to get there. And Amiobi puts it past Kasper Schmeichel at the near post. And Newcastle, props to them. They were playing so, so well in this game and they get the goal that they deserve. We could just not handle their closing down. It's incredible. I'd never played a game where the opposition had closed us down so effectively to the point where we just couldn't get out of our half for 20 minutes at a time. As you can see, we have managed to get into the opposition half with Kamano. They're finding some space. It falls to Jamie Vardy on the volley, but it's saved again very well there by Rob Elliott. Now into injury time, into the 90th minute. Jamie Vardy is going to have to try and find some space. He gets past Rob Huth and he's one-on-one -on -one and he's hit the inside of the post in the 90th minute and... You know, just just them ones. You know them ones where you're just not supposed to win a game. It was just it was just one of them. We lost the game 1-0 against Newcastle. I could tell when I was playing it, I'm just never going to win this game. There was no way I was ever going to win that game. Or even draw that game, let alone get a win. And uh, Kasper Schmeichel gets him out of the match. But we do lose, for I think the first time ever, actually, for about a year and a half real time, to Newcastle. Nevertheless, in brighter news, we've had um, some bids accepted for the players we were looking at. Kedju and Dix, like Pojna and Vitesse respectively, have accepted offers for those guys. Sao Paulo have also accepted our £2.3 million bid for Arrow, and Wolves have accepted our £2.75 million, uh, 2 million bid for Dominic Iorfa. Now, um, the only team to actually reject a bid was actually Ribble Leipzig. They rejected our £1.5 million bid for Lucas Kloster, and we put in a better bid of uh, £1.8 in the end, and uh, we'll be going through with that one. Hopefully, they'll accept that bid and uh, we'll be able to get into contract talks with him as well. But now it is time to engage in contract talks with the other players that we had our transfer fees at, or transfer bids accepted for. And the first of which is Dominic Iorfa of Wolves, the right back, 21 years old. Um, again, if there's, uh, if there's any players that you don't know, you don't know the attributes of or the potentials of, all their SoFIFA profiles will be in the description below, as is always the case, because I understand a lot of these players you may not have heard of before. Also making a contract bid there for, or contract offer for Auro, 15k a week after 20k a week for Dominic Iorfa, uh, making a £20,000 a week bid as well for, or, oh, why do I keep saying bid, offer for Thomas Kedjura? Uh, all of the lengths I think were four-year contracts uh, and squad roles, I put squad rotation player for all of the contract offers. Now making a 15k a week contract offer for Kevin Dix of Vitesse Arnhem, the 20 year old uh, right back getting a squad rotation squad role and also a four year length in contract so we'll have to see whether those contract offers are successful after the second game of today's episode which is against Liverpool and uh, as you can see there just an illustration of just how close the Premier League is at the moment five points separating ourselves and Liverpool and six positions separating ourselves and Liverpool we are second on 41 Liverpool just five points back but find themselves all the way down in eighth. The players to watch out for in this game are Patrick Herman and Roberto Firmino. Of course, Patrick Herman, one of the uh, players that we bought in the summer that we were talking about earlier on and in the intro. There you can see the squad, though, in the background for today's game against Liverpool, uh, which has sparked a lot of really, really like interesting and exciting games in the past. We've beaten them 4-0 before in the Capital One Cup, and we've drawn against them 4-4 in the Barclays Premier League. And just two minutes gone, Vardy trying to find some space. It's fallen to Mbolo. And the referee has given a penalty and it's bounced around. Dejan Lovren has obstructed Mbolo and the referee has given what seems to be a very soft penalty. Well, Riyad Mahrez will not complain. He'll step up and convert after just three and a half minutes. And in the blink of an eye, we're already beating Liverpool. I hadn't even said what stadium we were at. We're at home 
for this game. And Riyad Mahrez has made the home fans very happy because he's blasted the ball uh, into, the, into the net and uh, sent Simon Mignolet the wrong way. Just six minutes later, Maxi Arnold's picked up the ball on the edge of the area, but a good save from Mignolet. Hooked back into the box from Riyad Mahrez, but Mazuak, whose header is blocked. And Bolo now, some good hold-up play to find Mahrez. Kante now seeing Bruno Perez on the overlap down the right-hand side on the 29th minute. He's going to try and cut past Alberto Moreno. He does so, blast the ball past Simon Mignolet at his near post. And we lead 2-0 here already after just half an hour. And Bruno Perez, the fan favourite, the main man, finding himself in all sorts of attacking positions yet again, cutting past Alberto Moreno. And what a finish that is from the Brazilian right back. He's not getting replaced uh, very anytime soon, though we are going to hopefully give him a bit of an understudy and an undergraduate. Nevertheless, Daniel Sturridge there hitting the crossbar, his header assisted onto the woodwork by the palm of Kasper Schmeichel. Excellent save from the Danish international. Slightly easier save for the Belgian international Mignolet at the other end from Mahrez's head. I'm not entirely sure how he managed to beat Sacco in the air. Mahrez though now going forward with his feet and curling a ball, uh, trying to put the finesse in from outside the area. It hits the post though and finds Jamie Vardy and yet again that vardy Mares partnership is working again slightly indirectly this time. This time uh, with the post in between. But we now lead this game 3-0 after 51 minutes. And I don't know, I'm just, just, just putting it out there. Maybe deja vu. Maybe history is going to repeat itself. And it could do here. We could grab a fourth, but Jamie Vardy hits the bar. Simon Mignolet was beaten all ends up. But uh, unfortunately, Jamie Vardy only hitting the cross, uh, crossbar. And Bolo, though, finding Bruno Perez. His shot is saved by Mignolet. And Liverpool are being peppered. Luka Zahovic is now off the bench has found Bruno Perez on the overlap into the box for Maxi Arnold to convert emphatically to make it 4-0 again. Lightning has struck twice. History has repeated itself because we are beating Liverpool. My support, my, the team I support in real life, 4-0, which is slightly painful. And Maxi Arnold has got the goal. It, did, it was a very fierce strike, so I did just put the sliders up on the screen. Because uh, as a casual viewer, it looked to me as if... Um, the shot power was, ab was abnormally high, but I can confirm it was on the normal settings. But we do win the game in the end 4-0, despite a late scramble for Liverpool in the last 12-10 minutes. But Bruno Perez, he had a big part to play. He scored one of, the uh, one of the goals and he got man of the match. Good rating as well there for Maxi Arnold and an 8.2 for Mara. 7.7 as well for Fukrata Mazuaku. And what a performance yet again. Thrashing the big teams on the big on the big stage, it has to be said. Well, moving on from that incredible performance, we are now selling a player. Kyle Bailey is off to Shrewsbury for 220k. And we've also got some good news about the players that we are trying to sign. Arrow has accepted a contract offer, as well as Dominic Ior for Rebel, uh, Rebel Leipzig, sorry, have also uh, accepted or RB. Technically RB Leipzig. Technically they're not Red Bull Leipzig, but they are to me. Nevertheless, that's not the point. Red Bull Leipzig have actually accepted our contract offer for uh, Lucas Klosterman and just uh, confirmation there that Bailey has been sold. Kedjior has also accepted a contract offer as well as Kevin Dix. And now the only thing we have to do is offer a contract to Lucas Klosterman because obviously Red Bull Leipzig rejected our first offer for him. 15k a week, four-year contract length and squad role as squad rotation player. And as you can see, he would accept that contract offer, which means we've now got five right backs we can choose from and I once again as always I'm going to leave the vote completely and directly to you guys in the description there will be a straw poll for you guys to directly vote for which right back you would like me to sign as backup for Bruno Perez would you like Dominic Iorfa of Wolves a slightly more expensive option in terms of wages and uh, transfer fee we've got Kevin Dix of Vitesse who's got about 80 potential uh, 20 years of age from Vitesse uh, I said Vitesse from Holland sorry uh, slightly less well known again all the players so FIFA profiles will be in the description the completely unknown um option which is Thomas Kedjura of Lech Poznan in the Polish league 2.2 million pounds for him and 20k a week in offered wage Lucas Klosterman as well 1.8 million pounds 15k a week from Red Bull Leipzig and of course Auro as well from uh, Sao Paulo so judge it on the player that you like 
on their potential, on their current overall, on you know the fee, on their wages, everything. Take that all into account. Have a look at their SoFIFA profiles and then vote in on the straw poll in the description as to which right back you would like me to buy. Nevertheless, hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of Leicester City Career Mode. Feel free to hit the likes button if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new around here as well and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. Don't forget to check out the straw poll and vote on that as well as checking out WWT FIFA mods in the description too. But nevertheless, it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.